there was so much freedom then. Yeah, you feel? <laughs> yeah, I feel like it was just like we were just nobody gave a crap about us. There's no expectation. Like nobody, yeah. there's no expectation. Uh, so from my point of view, I thought we were probably the freest we've ever been. Not that we're not free still. We still write the way we want, but there is expectations. Yeah, there's, there's a bit more pressure on pressure. yourself there's, to keep well, delivering. Yeah, you know? we have a team, we have a management, a label, an agent. So there's like a lot of people that start to ride on, hey, are you going to start making money so we can start making money <laughs> kind of attitudes? And they're all great. They love us and support us, but there's more pressure. Yeah, now, for you know? sure. Compared yeah. to Lost in Psycho City, we were yeah. just these two nutty, stupid ideas that we had. We were like, let's just see what happens. And, yeah. I, I think, know. yeah, it was, it was a real time, I think of like, you know, like you say, like freedom. And I think we were really discovering ourselves as, um, as, 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 uh, directors for our music videos. Yeah, That's totally. when we and really, musicians. we were like, yeah. I'd never done any metal and sky would never done any. I've been like into punk and like reggae. I would been play, I was already playing with Mr. D like, uh, uh, I think I was already doing Mob Barley even back then, wasn't I? Yeah. So like, like we've been doing it for years. So I was never doing like really heavy stuff. So even myself trying to figure out metal guitar, I'm actually still way behind compared to these younger guys that are like. Do you feel like you've really grown as a guitarist? So I have, but like I, not direction. compared to like some of the kids that I see playing this day. But I've grown as a producer and a writer. That's for sure. I still I find myself at night now a lot still playing guitar, going over my scales, trying to get better because there's these kids I see online that make me feel like I shouldn't touch my guitar. Sometimes. Man, kids these days and everything. You have like 11 year olds that are murdering you online when you're playing yeah, video games. Just, you have these. You know, you watch someone play guitar hero there's like a five-year-old playing behind their back on the hardest <laughs> yeah, it's over the top yeah. Of i think that's the one thing that the internet does to us that we have to be mindful of is that in normal circumstances you wouldn't see i wouldn't see them every single you know child prodigy in guitar <laughs> you know blasted because of your feed is curated to guitar it's like showing you every single person that's amazing at this that's getting thousands of views and stuff and in in times before you wouldn't be even be aware that they exist so you can't yeah. always compare yourself to those types of people and i find that the same way too with with the internet so you're still amazing. Hey, to, to make to make you feel better, check this comparison that I had to make. So I hadn't seen a concert in two years. And I just went to Montreal a couple of weeks ago and I saw a dream theater. So my first concert oh, cool. back is dream theater and I'm a guitarist. So imagine watching that band and you're like, how, how is it humanly possible yeah. that someone can play every, all four of them? How can they each play instruments yeah, at that serious, level? It makes playing. zero sense. <laughs> yeah, it's serious playing, serious yeah. guitar playing, serious drumming, serious. Those guys are can lay down. What are they like? Probably in their late 50s, early 60s now. Yeah, I think it was 92 was the big debut. So it's been a while. Yeah, yeah they've been around for a long time. Wow. Strong band. Yeah. Yeah. But he's uh, he, Matt, it always impresses me with how much he's he's learning with recording and and just producing in general. He just really, really over especially this Still time trying to figure it out though. he's he's watching tutorials all the time to expand his skills and learn and oh, yeah so matt you you produced all three albums um that i did with uh, with help of some other peeps right like so the first album was all me and mixed all my me the second album was all me and james larock who uh did a lot of skin dread stuff uh he helped mix and help produce and Wait, that's cool that it was a skin dread show that kicked this off and you're able to get someone apart. It wasn't, of it wasn't a, a fluke. It was very planned. Everything, we, everything was this girl. Once we had this mission, <laughs> it, we, it, it all came together. I, I, uh, I really wanted Benji on a track. I really, really wanted him that's on a track. That's the singer of skin dread. Uh, yeah. And uh, so I found online, I just like looked up who produced like their, their records and, and reached out and showed James some of our stuff. And he wrote back and I said, Hey, we're coming to UK. We're doing a show. Do you want to come out to the show and, and see us and meet us? And he did. And then the following time we were back in uh, the UK, he invited us and to do like a song together. So we were, we we're literally headed to UK. We're but gonna... he didn't get us bench. I know. Oh. That's what was so cool. Yeah. We were literally headed 
to UK. I'm like, oh, we got the producer that just worked with Skin Dread. This is awesome. We're going to do a song with him. We're going to go record it with him. We're going to record it with him in England. It's going to be great. And literally the first night we are in London, we had a, a meeting with our PR company that was there to help us do PR for that tour. And we started talking about how we were doing the song. Actually, we started getting drunk with them. Yes, we started getting drunk with them. We were so excited. We were like, oh, we're working with James to do this song. And then um, our Adam. Adam, our guy at the PR company is like, well, I know, like, why don't you just get like Benji to be on the song? If you're doing it with James anyway, why don't you get him to be on the song? And I was like, well, yeah, I'd love that. But like, can you make that happen? He's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> so between call him calling Benji and getting in touch with Benji's management, he was like, sure, send me the song. And then by the end of the tour, we were like listening to his rough vocals. He was laying down on this track that we had just recorded at the beginning of the tour. It was like pretty surreal. No, no, it wasn't by the end of the tour. It was like by like midway through it. He already had the vocals down. And then by the end of the tour, we met up with him in Wales, uh, where he is in Cardiff. And we shot a video for the song. Was that the same tour? Was yeah, that, I think that was the tour the, after. No, we put it all in one thing. That's we crazy. had to because we came back. That's why we came back with right. just no other footage but this, that. Yeah. And if we did make it happen, the second one, which I don't think it was, but if it was, whatever, we pulled it all off. Sky was crying. I was so happy. <laughs> I was like, this is the best day of my life. <laughs> I think it's like when you have a goal that you really, really want to happen and you just like kind of like push through every step to try to make it happen and then it actually happens. I think it's like one of the best rewarding feelings that you could ever have. And I was just like, on cloud nine that day. I was just like, yes, this is so sick. I'm doing a song with the guy who inspired the band to even exist. And that was like super full circle. For He's me. always been it. really supportive of us because we're very open about the fact that they inspired us instead of kind of hiding and concealing and acting like we didn't get some inspiration from that band because we draw a lot of inspiration from that band. We definitely love dance hall beats and it's it makes them seem unique. So it makes us feel like there's not a lot of bands that kind of pull those kind of rhythms off. So we like to be open about the fact that they're very a big influence of, to us. Mm -hmm. It's it's really hard to be unique in music, it, it seems like. It seems like everything's already been done, yet you guys have a unique sound, you have a unique image. I'm just curious where the ideas come from for something like Psycho City, um, the alter egos. It, it feels like there's an influence of, of like circus, uh, horror movies. I'm wondering if you're a fan of, of you know, magic and magic movies like the prestige and well, the you see how much a dvd collection is uh on okay. our wall still that i can't get rid of because this guy's obsessed <laughs> with all these he's like oh, the artwork the artwork we can't throw them out because the artwork so i live with a guy who's pretty much other than music like a huge like film buff and like into all things you know fantasy horror action you're making me sound like a sci-fi <laughs> i mean it's just yeah it's uh, he's introduced me to a lot of movies and literally in the middle of like every movie i've ever watched he's like oh yeah that's the director who did that and that's the actor that was in that movie that probably worked with that person so as he, he just knows like all these like crazy movie facts so when we first started yeah. with our music videos, <laughs> so when we, not all me, when we first started <laughs> with our music well i think back in the day we would watch a lot of this stuff on the tour bus like when Sky was even working with Capital, you know, we would all have nights where movie the whole nights, band yeah. movie nights and, you know, Scott, you know, we were the ones supplying the movies, not Sky, you know, we were so it was like we were always playing Evil Deads and just weird films that we all thought were really uh, crazy. And so there's I've always had that influence. I like all our music videos, especially the earlier ones. I can I can. I rip, ripped off tons of ideas. I don't even, I don't even try to hide that. It's like, it's a, a big I, influence for me to it. But Mercy was your idea. That very mm -hmm. first video that Sky ever did, she just had this weird idea and went with it. I think it was the second one that I was like, oh, I've got this idea a bit. But like Interceptor is 100% a rip off of a movie that I watched when I was in the eighties called, I think it's called Clowns or something, but and, and what's kind of crazy is it's, we ripped off a bunch of shots and it terrified me when I was a kid and I could use it. And I was like, right. oh, Sky, let's do this. But and what's so cool, I think, is you had this core memory. Ne i would never seen it. I'd never seen it. And I don't think we ever watched no, it to it use either. it as inspiration. No, you've you, never seen it. No, but I'm saying you had this memory of yeah. it in your head that was inspiring the feeling that you got when you watched yeah. it to inspire this 
this uh, video. music video. Yeah. And we never like sat down and watched the movie and made notes and like did stuff. You just go, this is what was the core feeling that I have still in my body from watching a crazy, creepy clown try to like yeah. invade this house and the things that you could do of it looking through the window and all these like appearances, like running around and kind of the circusy element of it. And it all came from like, and it could be that you watch the movie now and it has nothing to do with what we did. But no, I still ripped some stuff Okay, well, whatever. He had it in his head. <laughs> I, was like, I confession. This is the it. confession. It actually, actually, for years, I couldn't find the film. But like one of our fans about two or three years ago sent me the link to the movie, oh, but yeah? I can't remember what it's called still, but it's on YouTube. I finally found it. And it is Three Clowns. And it's very similar to ours, but like lots of differences. But it's uh-huh. a vicious movie. Even when I watched it now, I was like, whoa, I can see why it really messed me up when I was younger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't we, love clowns. I mean, I love clowns, but I don't want to be around clowns. <laughs> have, so have you seen the It movies? Chapter one, chapter I two? I saw the first It movie. After the first seeing the first It going through both things and Pennywise and all that stuff back then, I, I didn't see the point of doing the remake. I was yeah. like... Yeah, the one thing that Matt and I gripe about a lot is all the remakes. Remakes don't do it for me as much. It's just... We, it's yeah, the money we're grabs. Like, yeah, and we're RoboCop, so... I checked that one out. The original RoboCop, way better still. Why even touch it? It was already an incredible film made way i don't know if it was early, late 80s or early 90s whichever one it was for that time and era they nailed it if you watch it now nothing looks that you know it was just great uh same with total recall they did a killer job the original total recall with arnold schwarzenegger why they would do it again and i saw the set <laughs> remake and i was like sure i get the graphics look great but it doesn't top what if the idea and how it was created it doesn't inspire. It doesn't inspire. If you where, where the they think one? there's some easy money, that's that's yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's all based around they still what got you my money market. though, eh? Because yeah. I still saw it. At yeah, you still, that's yeah. what I Damn. always say. Because even I actually, if you, if you, own, stop, if you I stop going to watch the remakes, sequels, they're sitting on yeah. the shelf right now. You stop me. going to watch them. If you stop buying them, they'd stop making them. So I I, I blame you for for what's going on <laughs> with these sequels. I have a question uh, sent in. <laughs> So you guys have a Psychos Unite official street team on Facebook. So there's a few thousand people. They're very active. I infiltrated and I asked for their help. I said, if you guys are, were sitting down with the band, what questions would you ask? So I had a bunch of responses. So this is from Oriana Riot. That's a great last name for a fan of yours. Um, she wants to know, is there a sumo psycho song that became very popular that they never thought it would? And then there's a second question that I don't know if you want to answer. She wants to know what metal bands they think are underrated and overrated. Hmm. Oh, I'll never say the overrated one. That's what I'm I'm trying to get out there still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe (laughs) maybe underrated. Who's who's not uh, respected enough for how good they are? Well, I think the one thing I find really kind of interesting being a band that travels in different territories around the world is you see a scene in say UK where certain bands are massive and they're selling out arenas. And then when they try to tour in the States, they're like barely getting people out to the shows. And there's this kind of disconnect in some of the different markets that we go to. Like for instance, we went to New Zealand and there's this amazing band we toured with called Devil Skin. And they're so amazing, but it's like, why doesn't the rest of the world you know them as well as the yeah, people in their they're, hometown. They're so, underrated outside of New Zealand. Yeah, they're in totally New underrated. Zealand, they own it. Though. Yeah, in New Zealand, they're like, they got it. But like everywhere else, I'm like, why don't you guys know about this band making waves over here? And same with, I think a lot of our faves, like even Enter Shikari, who's huge in UK. I don't feel like is as big in the States. I wish more people in the States knew about them. So I think it's for us, it's very territorial. Like People know that a band is good, I think, in at least some pocket of the world. And it's just like, uh, why doesn't everyone else know about I like that? a band that I think is coming up in the UK called Seething Akira. And I, yeah, they're great. I saw them, they opened for us a couple years ago and I've been watching them closely. And then, like, if I had the income, I would be investing in them, I think. Because if they get the right song, I think they're going to fly. I think they're dope. And I think they're starting to get close. They're getting close. They reached out to us, but we to work on a song together, but we couldn't get it all together with uh with our schedule. But I really think those kids are going up. And like as new artists, I mean, one of the kids there are they are getting the exposure though. Like, uh, there's a UK artist that Sky likes, especially I do too, uh, called the Nova Twins. That they're getting some real hype right now in UK. I don't know how much in Canada and America, but they're going to. I think that that's a band that's I wouldn't call underrated, but are 
they're getting just there. rated. People yeah. should know about them. I think they're coming to Toronto. Sky might yeah. want, want to go and see that show. I don't know about anybody else that you can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, I don't like to say overrated bands. I mean, there's <laughs> yeah, a couple bands I'd love yeah. to say some. I some heard, bands but... just get picked on. You know, it's like they found a formula, but. Hey, you know, you start having any success like, is awesome. Yeah, like you start realizing I don't pick on, I, it's rare I really pick on bands about what they do musically or how successfully they are. It's more about how they uh, carry themselves as people mm. that really uh, bugs me. So like, it's not about overrated or underrated. It's like, are they good good band or bad band? Are they good peeps? Like uh, sometimes mm. that's what I kind of rate bands as. <laughs> yeah. And we've had a couple bands we've toured with that I would rate terrible fucking people. And then we've had amazing tours with really great people. And, uh, but I just don't like to throw too many names out there. I've done it in the past and I can get myself in trouble. Pretty yeah. Good. You end up, you end up on a bill with them or on the same. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you know, so. yeah. as, well. as for the song, the <laughs> portion of the question that was about like what song was unexpected, I guess. I think for us, it's really hard uh, to. Marmosets. We oh, like yeah. them. They're underrated. I don't even know if they're playing right now, but. What's the, the band? Movie. No. Marmosets. Marmosets. Okay. Yeah, they're cool well. Bands. Hopefully, all the bands, really hopefully all the bands you just named, get a, a boost from this podcast, and I'll I'll definitely go check them all out. I'll add them to a playlist. Yeah. 